Let's talk about the nine benefits of heat therapy. Now, the big contraindication of using heat as a therapy is for acute injuries. If you recently created an injury where there's inflammation and you put heat on it, it's gonna make it worse. You wanna use cold. Heat is really good for chronic conditions, especially chronic injuries. So here's some examples, a hot shower, steam room, sauna, jacuzzi, infrared. This is a certain wavelength using light. There's infrared A, which is the deepest, B and C. So B would go one millimeter and C is only gonna penetrate the, the uh, first lining of cells on your body. So they're used differently for different conditions. There's a lot of data on this right here. I'm not gonna get into that in this video. I will do a more detailed video just on that because there's a lot to talk about. Contrast bath therapy, where you're alternating from cold to heat. Now, I really like doing a hot shower, cold shower, alternate back and forth because it's really simple to do and you don't need any special equipment. You just need a shower. So the nine benefits would include decreasing uh, inflammation in your joints as in arthritis, especially chronic old injuries, decrease muscle spasm, usually compensating for an old injury, decreasing pain, decreasing pain in general. But again, if it's acute injury, use cold. Number six, it rids the waste out of the area and it decreases CO2 because you're driving in blood flow and oxygen. With cold therapy, you're pushing the blood out of an area. And if you alternate with heat therapy, you put it back in. And if you're doing it alternately for an injury, for example, I recommend keeping the cold on until it goes through certain stages of intense pain and then numbness, and then apply the heat for about you know 10 minutes and then reapply the cold, go back and forth. Um, number eight, decrease stiffness. Number nine, increases your recovery, especially after a workout. So let's talk about why it works. There's certain genes in your body that kick in and are expressed when you add heat or cold and they do different things. There's one protein called the heat shock protein that I wanna talk about. And basically it responds to stress, heat, and other things as well. Oxidative stress, heavy metals, infection. So it's a protein that responds to a certain shock in the body or a certain amount of stress that then causes your body to adapt and do better. But this specific protein is very interesting because it protects the cell against misfolding. And that's what I wanna talk about briefly because this is very, very important. If you take a look at a lot of the chronic uh, diseases out there, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, even diabetes, you have a situation where you have an accumulation of certain proteins in the neurons, in the cells that are the endocrine gland cells, they can accumulate in the organs, and these aggregates or these uh, accumulation of these proteins uh, can, are non-functional and they clog up the function. Normally what happens is you have, you, the blueprints of the cell are copied into something called the RNA, which are basically a code for making proteins in the body. I'm not just talking about hair, nails, and skin. I'm talking about all the enzymes, the, the machinery that actually makes up the body. And so this genetic code goes into a factory. Okay, it's called a ribosome. It's a little protein factory that is red and then turned into a certain protein. So this comes out and then it's activated or folded, okay? So this protein is folded in a certain shape to make it functional. And it's, it looks pretty wild because it's all over the place. It's like that. And so now this protein is activated and it can go and do its work, whatever that function is. There are proteins that do a lot of different actions. They can even, they can, sometimes they contract, sometimes they relax, sometimes they spin, sometimes they pump, Sometimes they can walk and move. They do all sorts of actions in the body. But when you actually add stress to this area, and especially heat, think about when you heat up food. It destroys that enzyme and it makes it very uh, inactive because enzymes are sensitive to heat. But if we're adding just a little bit of heat, we turn on this protein right here and we can prevent the misfolding of this folded protein. 
Misfolding is basically going to make this protein inactive. It's going to clump it up more and get it all sticky and things like that. So this protein can prevent this from happening, which is very, very cool. Uh, just as long as you don't heat your body up too much. I mean, you don't want to put your body in boiling water. That would be very, very bad. And one last thing I want to talk about is that when you add fasting, okay, or intermittent fasting, your body goes through a condition called autophagy. And autophagy, what it does is it cleans up old damaged proteins, as in misfolded proteins. That's what it's cleaning up. It's taking these misfolded proteins, the stuff that's creating all these problems, and it's breaking it down into amino acids that you can use as brand new raw material to make tissue. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, press the button below and I will keep you in the know. Hey, that rhymes.